Greetings, my dears. Welcome to week two of Gothtober. We are getting into sound and hearing this week. I'm very excited. If you haven't joined in on Gothtober yet, if this is the first video you're seeing, or if you've been watching along and uh, you haven't done any of the activities yet, now would be a great time to join in because we're starting a new sense. Um, you can find the PDF for the activities for this week in the description down below. This week I'm going to be going through both of them in this one video and I'll be going over my experiences at the end as usual. So yeah, let's get into it. As we're getting into sound and hearing this week, we're starting to get into the senses that aren't inherent to tarot. Um, with sight, you know, we are usually looking at the cards, it's a visual medium. And so now that we're moving into hearing and as we go, it's going to be a little bit more interesting, I think, uh, to transpose these ideas of the senses into the tarot. And so I would say get ready to be a little bit more creative and, you know, stretch yourself a little bit more. For the first activity, we're going to be getting into the idea of like emanation and sound as an emanation and the influence that it has on us. Uh, keyword being onomatopoeia, so get ready for that. And for the second activity, we're going to be getting into audience. I thought of this genuinely, honestly, the first thing that came to my mind was like clear audience, to be honest with you. Um, but it morphed into being about audiences and listening to uh, someone either being in the audience or who the audience is of a particular figure. So that's really interesting. We're going to be getting into that. That one is going to be, it's kind of big. So yeah, let's just jump in to the first activity. This first activity is kind of, it's very sensory in the sense that you will be making some sounds. So get ready for that. Um, so the idea of emanation is pretty much that like anything that we encounter in life has it makes a sort of sound whether it's um, Inherently makes a sound or if you know, we're using it in some kind of way things make sounds and they have this sort of sound emanation that comes from them um, and also voice as well so as you know peoples and even animals as well, uh, they will have a voice and we all have our unique sound that comes out of us. And I think that's really cool to explore. So for this activity, what we're going to be doing is really looking at a card and imagining and making the sound that we think this card would make. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm just going to pull a card here. Oh goodness, we're going to start with the uh, Nine of Swords. This is uh, cruelty, I believe. Jeez, so depressing. Um, yeah, I think the sound that I would make is like, uh, uh. <laughs> That's the sound that I think this guy is making. <laughs> and um, so on the PDF, you'll see that there's a chart. And so it's going to have a, a column for the card, a column for the emanation, a column for the influence. So as you're looking at, um, I keep wanting to say ruin for cruelty. Um, you're going to, you know, make the sounds that you think the card would make and kind of, I guess, write it down in an automatopoeia kind of way. Like, what is, uh, sound like, how do you write that? You know, write it down. It's just for, um, there's no right or wrong, obviously, on how you spell, uh, but you know, put it there. And then like, what is the influence that that sound gives you? Like, uh, it makes me like, it slumps my shoulders. I feel like heaviness, like that kind of thing, right? And so we'll do that again with another kind. Let's see. Oh, we have the two of cups. La 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 la. That's how I feel when I look at this one. Like, or mmm, yes, mmm. Like I feel like a hug. Like when you get it, like a good hug, you're like, mmm, you know, something like that. And yeah, so how does that? How does that feel? It feels, um, comforting. It feels uh, safe that kind of thing. So keep going with that and, you know, do as many cards as you want. I did like, what, what are you looking at? One, two, three, four, five. Some of them have like more sounds than you might think. Like you also might look at this, let's see, um, with like the fish, you might do that like fish sound. Like, I don't know, some people can do like a, I don't know, <laughs> like you might do one of those. And like, what does that sound feel like? It feels like, um, almost like possibility. I feel like that sound makes me, it, it feels like maybe playful or, um, exciting or um, whimsical, that kind of thing. What else are we looking at here? Obviously you have the water, so you might have like a more like bubbling sound of, I don't know, I did like the, <laughs> I 
as well as like like bubbling I don't know how to do that sound um, but yeah, because of my background in expressive arts therapy, I really want to like challenge you if this is something that's new to you. Uh, for some of you, it may be some of you might be just used to and comfortable being like silly like that. Um, but just kind of like what we call like sounding, just making a sound, letting a sound come out of you. It doesn't have to like no one's around. Obviously, I'm doing it for you, but no one's around. Uh, just make whatever sound, you know, comes to you. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> this I'll leave that up to you if you get that card <laughs> but yeah make a sound um and write how that sound influences you how does it make you feel like what does it you know remind you of um that's more open-ended but yeah just have fun with making sounds and imagining what sound might come out of this card that's part one and then part two we're going to do another version of emanation and now we're going to be looking at like like let's come back to this uh, cruelty card right so now it's going to be, you'll have the option of writing the card and now we're going to look at like a noun. For this one I see, like I guess we could put, like I don't want to put swords because I think that's a little bit too on the nose, um, but I would put something like, I don't know, I see those like, um, I could do like blood or I could do like those, it looks like teardrops, they're not like the color that we would imagine teardrops to be, maybe it's rain. I don't know. Um, I'll call them teardrops, right? Um, so let's call it teardrops. So we'll have the card, a noun, which is teardrop or teardrops and a verb. So what do teardrops do? They fall. And so with this, with this card, the uh, nine of swords with this noun teardrop and with this verb of fall or falling or whatever, um, start to think and feel and focus on the card, on these words, and see if you can hear a sentence, a phrase, something that might be said by this card. Uh, see if you can hear their voice, the voice of the teardrops maybe. Um, I'm falling, I never stop falling, I can't stop falling, something like that, right? Just write that down. And you can come up with as many as you want on a particular card. Like some cards have more things on them to uh, more verbs. I mean, more nouns or maybe more verbs that you can come up with. Um, and, you know, you can do one for just this lotus up here. You can do one for uh, the, the fish specifically. You can do, um, you know, any part of the card that you find most interesting or that you want to hear the voice of that part of the card or the card as a whole, um, whatever works for you there. And so also do that with um, as many cards as you feel comfortable doing that with. Um, that one was really, really, really fun. And I think what makes it um, stretching a little bit is that, and you know, you've done the playful part of making the sound yourself and now you're sort of going inward to listen to hear if you can hear uh, a voice of that card speaking through this noun and verb. The noun and verb is there to support you in um, kind of getting the juices flowing to see if those words can help you uh, get to the voice, if that makes sense. I think for me, one of the practices that I do that I think I've talked about at some point is um, what I call, there doesn't have, there's no name for it. I just call it unconscious writing, um, where I will just close my eyes and I will just begin to type and I will just listen for the next word, the next word, and then the next word. So the car went to the shopping mall when, I don't, and I'll just keep going. <laughs> like, uh, that's a horrible example, but you get the drift, you get the gist, you catch my drift. Um, but yeah, so the, the noun and the verb is there to sort of focus you on something and maybe get you kind of started. And as you have those words, maybe a phrase will, you know, you'll begin to hear the voice of that person, I would say, or person, figure, thing, whatever the case may be. And, you know, just, just practice that. It's a fun time, no wrong answers. And, um, I think what's really interesting, what ends up happening is that you sort of get a, a message from the card, a voice from the card, the card starts to speak to you. And that's the, that's the exciting part. So if you have like a sound, you know, an automatopoeia type of thing, um, like we do with like, I was thinking of like bees and it's like, bzz, you know, that kind of thing. What does that feel like? Ooh, some people are going to feel like comforted by that sound. And some people are going to feel off put by that sound, scared by that sound, freaked out by that sound. <laughs> um, and that influences maybe how you see the card, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So that is activity one. Um, it's, 
let me know what you think of it. I'm really excited to hear what your experiences are. If you try it, let me know, leave a comment and I would love to hear about it. And um, yeah, let's get into activity two. Okay, activity two. This one is going to be, I think, even more stretching, but uh, also more creative as well. So it kind of, the, the emanations expand as we go throughout this week. Uh, for audience, so that is the sort of title of this, this uh, activity. And I have the definition of audience here, at least, you know, a couple that felt relevant. Um, we have the assembled spectators or listeners at a public event, such as a play, movie, concert, or meeting and the readership of a book, magazine, or newspaper. There's also like people who watch a, pro a TV or radio program or listen to a radio program, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so with this idea, we're thinking about the audience of a particular figure within the card. So the major arcana and the core cards have gen generally a, a main figure or multiple figures within the card. So we're gonna want to separate those out of the deck a la week one and our evoking uh, evocation um, and just pull up, pull them out and start to look at them and see if you can choose the one that's most appealing to you. Um, or if that's a little bit too hard, you can always shuffle them uh, you know, separate out the ones you like the most and then shuffle those and, and pick one from there. But you're going to want to pick one card. Um, and you can also go with uh, someone that, that you've already worked with so far in either the last activity or any of the previous that you want to, you know, maybe go a little deeper with them. And uh, that's another option. So pretty much you can choose the most appealing, shuffle, let the deck pick for you. Or you can go with someone that you've already found some intrigue about. Um, maybe you didn't like them, maybe you liked their sound, They're, they had a nice uh, voice for you on the last activity, something like that, um, where there's a previous connection, you can continue to explore that connection. And the questions that we're gonna be getting into just uh, a little bit is like, who the audience is of this character, of this figure? What format do they express themselves mostly? Um, and why would someone show up to listen to them? You know, who do they appeal to? And uh, so we'll be answering those questions on the following page. So as you know, the PDF is linked down below. And um, yeah, so as you consider your answers, you can also pull out another deck if you want, um, or you can choose from the thoughts, but you can pull cards to support you as you go. They're mainly um, sort of creative journaling questions, but you can use decks if you want to, uh, to you know, support your, your, your responses. And I will say for the questions, I did this a couple of times and uh, the questions are in a particular order, but they don't have to be answered in that order. So if you feel like uh, you want to kind of just look through the questions and see which ones start to um, make the most sense to you or start to get your, I don't want to keep saying your juice is flowing, but um, to just start the responses just coming to you. You know what I mean? Um, you can do that. So whatever order that you want to answer them in, I just want to give that disclaimer. That's fine. Um, the, the different times that I did it, I felt like different aspects came forward sooner than the others. So the first question is, what is the message of this figure? So using the, one of the methods that we did in the last activity, or any method that works for you, you can try to listen for what this figure's messaging would be. What would they be saying? So you can listen for their voice and see if, you know, as you look at them, or just the feeling that you get from them so far. By this point, you may have that practice from the previous activity to help you to sort of uh, figure out the way that you uh, hear the voice of the character the best. So just write down some things that they might say, the message that they is important for them to share, the things that they would communicate. And then the next question is, who is the audience of this figure? So you wanna start thinking about, okay, well, who, what kind of uh, person or being would need their truth? Uh, would need the message that they have to, to share and you know who would they be appealing to who would find the most appealing and who would go out of their way to maybe seek this person out to listen to them um, and next is what format do they express themselves so based on their energy their aura you know what you know about the card what you feel from looking at them um, and even maybe from the message and the audience so far, you know, they build on each other as you go, potentially, what would be their method of communication? So what would be the thing that they put out that they have an audience for? 
You can also, as a bonus, uh, think about like what their favorite song is and or like what kind of music they would listen to, what genre of thing. Oh, maybe they're into podcasts. What kind of podcasts would they listen to? <laughs> Something like that. Um, a bonus, you know, just to think about w what, um, what would they be in the audience of maybe. Uh, and then we are asking, why would someone show up and listen to this person? So um, a little bit different than, you know, what, why they're appealing or, or who they would appeal to. The question is like, why are they appealing? Uh, so what would make them special in the industry that they're in? So let's say if they're a podcaster, if you look at this person and you're like, yeah, they look like they have a podcast for sure about XYZ. Uh, what would make them stand out in that industry? So what, why would someone show up and listen to them specifically? And maybe do they have any like audible quirks that, uh, you know, set them apart with the way that they express themselves? Um, if it's vocally or even if it's written, you know, what, what kind of thing would be specific to the way that they express themselves? Um, you might also want to go back to the onomatopoeia thing. That could be a, a, an interesting way to start to suss out what that sound and what that, um, uh, specificity might be because you're like you know you know you're looking at it and you're hearing pops so you're like well maybe they just they they really project you know just an example so yeah we want to look at what would make them stand out there and then lastly we have a little bonus creative project that you can do with the uh, with this person with this figure and the the creative aspect and this is where you know the project can be as big or as small as you know makes sense for you um, but the idea is that let's say that you are in the audience of this person that you know that their messaging is it's for you and you know they hear that you're a fan and you know you guys are meeting each other and you know they decide to create or write or whatever the case may be whatever their form of communication is they uh, want to make one specifically for you but somehow it's like by magic they just it's like they speak right into your heart it's like they tapped in to the center of you and they just said something that was just so personalized for you so the idea is then you go and you recreate what that thing is and you know if they're a singer, let's say if you said that they're a musician, they, they do music. Um, it might be a little bit difficult for you to do that if you're not a singer, if you're not a musician. You can also describe it if that's the case. But if, let's say, they're a writer, they write novels, uh, they write poems, you know, they are a podcaster, they are a talk show host. Um, and let's say they made <clears throat> something specific for you, that might be a little bit easier. You could write something, you could uh, do a little speech, something like that. And maybe you want to record yourself. Whatever the case may be, it's just an opportunity for you to sort of let your imagination run wild and also to do that dialogue uh, as if you are not uh, yourself, but you are for someone speaking to yourself. You know, we do that thing where it's like write a letter from your younger self to you, that kind of thing, you know, along those lines. But, you know, you can go even bigger. I'm excited to share with you what I made for this one. Oh my gosh, it took me so long, but I was so absorbed by the task. It was so, so fun. Yeah, so that is the end of the second activity. If you do the first activity, definitely let me know um, by giving me some onomatopoeia in the comments. Give me a boom, give me a pop, give me a crackle, <laughs> something like that. Um, and if you do the audience one, I don't know, write me something. Um, let me know what card you got for the audience activity. I think that'd be fun. But yeah, I'm really excited to hear how you guys get on with these. Um, I'm excited to share with you in just a second my experience, but uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining in, even if it's from the privacy of your own home. I really appreciate it. Um, if that's the case, you are doing it from the privacy of your own home. Just give me a little thumbs up in the comments to let me know that you did it, um, that you're joining in. I would love to know. Um, yeah, and uh, if you're going to end here, I'll see you in the next part later. But for now, bye. Alrighty, getting into my experience with the first activity. Very, very fun. I had a great time just being silly, making noises, making sounds, and just thinking creatively about the card, um, you know, as usual, but in this new way. It was so fun. Um, some of them were like a lot easier to come up with sounds than others. And sometimes with the sounds, it was like easier to determine like how they felt. Some of them were more neutral than others. Um, but yeah, I've got some of the cards here. Um, I don't really want to talk about it, but I will. So the first card that I got was the Five of Cups. And as I've said, I don't like this card. I just don't like the like, whatever that white stuff is. Like, I just, I don't 
really, yeah. Um, but I will say, so like the first thing that came to mind was like a, like something like that. Like, I don't know. It felt like, um, at first it was like gross, like something just like splat, you know, like splatting on the floor. I was thinking about like ice cream. Like if you drop your ice cream and it just goes like on the floor and you're just like, are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Like that disappointment, like I almost get tears in my eyes just thinking about it, like the the sinking feeling. Um, yeah, so that's how I felt. I was like, oh, look at it, it's disappointment. Um, the And um, yeah, it felt like, also like I was looking at those, like the little swirly lines that come up like at the top, that come down and they do all this stuff. Um, I thought it was interesting. It's funny because you see the heart and the butterfly, at least, you know, visually to me, I see that. Um, but I, it made me think about, like, I was seeing, like, the zzzz, like, that kind of thing was coming to mind. Like, almost, like, those, like, toys that the kids play with in the doctor's office. Um, and it was, like, clack, 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 zzz, clack, 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 that kind of thing. I'm not probably making the best sound, but those are the ones that I can make that I, uh, came up with. Um, but yeah, it gave me this feeling of, like, forced play, of, like, this, like, almost, like, dread apathy of, like, waiting for something you don't even want to do. Um... Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I didn't expect to, you know, have a good time with this card because I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. But we'll like each other by the end of October. Watch. Um, Next we had the Eight of Cups. This one was really interesting. It was almost the only thing that I could think of. Like, I guess obviously there's like the whole storm happening and I've talked about that in a previous video. But like, all I could just hear was just the water running. It was just like, shh. like never ending that's more whistling it was more like a shh that kind of thing yeah that was more right that's all i could think about was just that water coming down maybe the whistling that's interesting didn't didn't experience it the first time around but there was this like maddening endless stream of water it was it's almost like the the dropping on the forehead thing that's not what it sounded like but that's what it felt like when i was listening to just like shh constantly it's like white noise that will never end uh yeah maddening was the word like this feels maddening which is you know cool like again just getting like really new ideas on the card even though like new ways of coming to uh the meanings that make sense like i didn't you know you don't think that going that doing something like this would like bring you to uh, a feeling that you would have already had but it just goes to show how much how the art just holds all that meaning inside of it no matter which way you come at it so this is uh the sound emanation was was really really cool i'll share just one more yes one of my favorites was the ace of swords this was so fun when i saw this i thought oh i was thinking like is holy like i the word holy that's how i felt it was like a chorus and it was like oh was like geez that's bad singing um i'm actually i'm actually a decent singer so i don't know why i sound really bad right now but anyway i also with all those like clouds and like little um geometric things i was also hearing like almost like a train not quite like a train but something like that and it was giving me the idea of like you're going places and it was it felt like brisk like fresh like you're on your way somewhere i was something like that i don't know oh yes no that part wasn't brisk i also felt like i heard like this like crunchy like like crunchy almost like the sound of snow when you're stepping on it fresh and it like compresses under your feet like that i got from this i feel it was like hearing like the steps through the snow and i was like oh now that is a good sound like i can't recreate it but i can hear it i can just it's it, it transports me um but yeah the holy the holy music was the first thing that I heard. So this one was really, 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 really fun. Um, actually, I will share one more really quick. I got the Aeon. And for this one, it was like the first thing that I heard was just nothing. Just utter silence. And the kind of silence that was almost like the, almost like the Five of Cups, like dread. Yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> And then and then the more I the more I looked at the card the more I just sat with it I started to hear like almost like nighttime sounds like crickets just like that that quiet ambiance of the night 
yeah, that's what I got. And it felt very, it felt very peaceful. Like at first there was this sort of like unsettling openness that was just too open. But then I felt the cover of nights come over me and it was a little bit more peaceful. Although it's not somewhere where you maybe want to be all the time or you feel like you could, you know, spend a lot of time there. Maybe it feels a little bit unsafe, unsettling, but you know, there's a, there's an enjoyment of the, of the ambiance. I don't know. That one was probably the most like different than what I would feel about the card without the exercise. Then we got into some of these other cards. This was so exciting. I will say my favorite one for this one was the Emperor. And I thought I had pulled out other cards, but I didn't. The Emperor was really interesting. This is, this is he. Is it upside down? No, it's not upside down this time. Yes, this is him. Um, what was really fun. So the word that came to mind was ruler. That's the noun, you know, he's a ruler. I'm looking at him, I'm thinking of him. And the verb that came to mind was, at first it was order, but I consolidate was just louder. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't go away. Like he orders things, right? So not like orders them, but he could be ordering things. I don't know. He orders people around. I order people. At first it was kind of like this, um, with the consolidate because it was louder. I don't, the only the, the only thing that came that I could hear was a quote from the movie fun with Dick and Jane that I watched when I was a kid and it was like strangely one that I watched a lot and it's about um uh Enron scandal and so it's starring um Jim Carrey and in the beginning of the movie he's like practicing like a speech I guess in the car if I remember correctly and he's like Globodyne is a consolidator of media properties consolidator 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 <laughs> That's all I could hear. And so it was funny just to think about a card that I usually associate with something very serious uh, with Jim Carrey and in a comedy movie about also something also very serious, which is just like fraud and just the ruin of that whole thing. Um, but also just like the idea of like consolidator, consolidator, consolidator. It was it's kind of funny. And he ends up being Jim Carrey in the movie ends up being like the fall guy for the the executives and so they kind of and you know make him this scapegoat which is really interesting um very interesting it was just really interesting to think about the emperor as being like a goof this like scapegoat character who's kind of like not the brightest i don't know how what the phrase is the brightest tool in the something how does it go <laughs> can't think of it um but yeah this like consolidator 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 but I also heard for order I also heard like order in the court like I was thinking of him as a judge um I and then I thought I will have order which was um in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and which is there a phoenix on this there is a phoenix see um yeah so I will have order and she was a really mean character so we go from this like goofy um not very bright just kind of like character that ends up you know being the easy target and you know to this like evil mastermind bad teacher evil lady harming children which is crazy in the order of the phoenix um so yeah scapegoat to phoenix very very cool and i'll share a what, what else do i want to share I'll just kind of rapid fire a couple other ones. So the, uh, I got the lovers um, and first I heard from Cupid. I picked Cupid and he shoots. It's like, I choose you, so I shoot you. And interesting. <laughs> and then with the hermit, um, the he's like, I guess, officiating this union. Um, I now pronounce you lovers together and lovers alone. <laughs> I bestow on you the gift of oneness. And then the other words were like, I bestow on you the gift of unity. I bestow on you the gift of harmony. Couldn't figure that one out. Um, but apparently he bestows the gift of something. And I don't know what that is. Then we had the three of swords, which for that I did a couple. So first I did the center. Um, that's the noun. It's the center. And pierced. And I heard, I am pierced at my center. I am pierced to my core and I also went with the petals so not just the center but the petals that are kind of like floating away um, I will be released from this wound I am I dispelled 
into sorrow. I don't know if that actually makes sense, but those are the ones that came to mind. So yeah, that one was really fun. Um, I kind of want to do it so much more, but I had to stop myself and slow down because I didn't want to get like too overwhelmed. But I think you could do it with like every card in the deck, to be honest with you, even the other activities. So this one was super, super fun. Um, but yeah, let's get into the second activity now. For this experience, I decided to go on a journey with the star. I, from earlier on, the star connected to the five of cups, which I'm still I still haven't gotten deeply into I want to journal about but because of that I wanted to I wanted to consult her when it came to audience and explore that with her so the first question and I'll talk about I did a second one as well with the Queen of Wands um, it's incomplete in that uh, the last task I is in progress but um, they went about slightly differently, so I just wanted to share a little bit about how they differed. Um, but for the star, I felt like I started to hear, so her hair, of course, like I talked about before, is something that really stuck out to me. Um, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense for the activity itself, I was kind of writing down what was coming to me, which one of the things was like, the flow of my hair heals you. Uh, I will hold your hold your uh, hand. Just the way that her hands were holding those cups, that's what I thought about, uh, or that's what I heard, I guess. Um, I extend my heart to you, I lift you up, and I pour into your cup. Um, so clearly I was getting this feeling of like, um, who's the audience of this, this, this figure? Someone who needs peace and healing, someone who might be hurting and feels mm, alone. Um, like they don't have anyone, like they're lonely, they're feeling abandoned. Um, I'm just imagining her speaking into that. And I feel like she would appeal to those who need to heal like a mother wound or a feminine wound of like a, a you know, a family member or a friend or something, a mentor or something like that. There's a, there's a, a wound there that needs to be healed. And someone who would seek uh, the star out or seek her out, they would do so when they were feeling like they had had enough, like when they had just kind of reached their breaking point if they were like tired burnt out like I heard sick and tired um yeah if you just if they just needed comfort and needed just open arms you know she's got the open arms so I was just imagining her being being that and those are the kind of audience that I feel like she would have is just people who have that experience now or have experienced that or, or would be comforted by the way that she expresses herself expresses these messages of um support and healing and um being held and for the format that she would express herself this one it kind of ended up going two separate ways so at first i thought like she would be just i heard a writer of healing words that's what i thought um maybe a poet um and i felt like she would like publish like an indie magazine i just imagined her to be like yeah i feel like she would have like a little press and she would be doing uh like this uh, magazine which I ended up naming um, soul seed healing instead of star seed was my first idea but it felt like it wasn't it didn't feel right so I was like this, I like the seed part but it's like soul seed healing and we'll get into that and I also feel like she would do like Reiki or like energy healing of some kind um, yeah and I think as far as like her favorite her favorite song. I feel like she would like Aurora and I think she would like, she would just, I think she would like the piano and like, I don't know, like more high, higher, uh, pitched, uh, song stresses. I think that's what, what she would like. And she would, you know, but she'd be very indie, like she'd be into the indie folks. Um, and, uh, I feel like she would know some really good, really good indie artists. And why would someone show up and listen to the star? I think they, I think that she would have a distinctive appearance. I know that's not necessarily, but I think she would have a very distinctive appearance as far as like, well, I don't know, I guess Aurora comes to mind too, where I'm just like, I granted her hair is long and Aurora has that like, almost like fairy look to her. But I think she would have something like that as well. Um, but I think she would speak like quietly and slowly. She might um, have an accent, like nothing in particular, but getting the sense that like, you know, she's otherworldly. So English is not her, her, her main language. Like, you know, the one that I'm speaking now, it wouldn't be something that's, you know, would be her comfort place of communication. Um, 
not comfort place, but it wouldn't be her mother tongue, put it that way. And, um, but at the same time, I, I was feeling like her voice is like higher. Like I said before, I feel like that's the kind of music that she would like. But then I was like, no, something about her feels like she would have a very like a depth to her voice. I, I feel like I was reminded of singers who like have this like higher voice, but then when they start singing, it's like down here and it's like, you're like shook panicking <laughs> and you're like what I did not know you could sing that deeply like their voice is just so the timbre is just like it's like almost like uh old film photography like it's very like mm, like oh it's like um geez louise it's like a record player like it has that like grit to it and so as soon as I started thinking about that I was like maybe she's also a singer think she's also a singer which is why just like music was just coming up so much so I feel like she would be healing words but like either written as far as like poetry but maybe song I think she could be a songstress herself uh it makes sense to me I think I think that makes a lot of sense it was giving Aurora it was um so yeah so when I went forward because the song thing came second and it's not something that I could easily recreate I ended up going with the magazine and I created like a little like mini like you know just a little fake version of what her magazine would look like her little indie her little indie publication so I'll just show it to you here um yeah it's called soul seed healing I just I, I had so much fun with this part um as you can see I put October 2024 issue 17 um I loved that and yeah just like these hands in the water um and you know I feel like she would have articles or um features like uh soulful calligraphy forest bathing turning pain into power these kinds of things um I put on the first page the uh poem by Emily Dickinson hope is the thing with feathers and just you know just design um something that I have fun so I'll just show you a couple of photos of that there's no like words other than that it's just kind of like showing a little bit of her vibe um I'm not sure if this is how per se she would do it but I just had fun with what came to my mind and what uh just flowed naturally from that and then I went and made one for myself which I'll keep personal for me I'll tell you the title and a little bit about it instead of the specific words that were written in the magazine for me um, but it was called making a holy mark sigil work as soul medicine and I pulled a couple of cards for this one in particular to support me so I'll show you those um, as opposed to you know the sigil itself and um, the the words so the cards I got um, I decided to pull from the outgrow yourself the faceted garden, um, so the outgrow yourself tarot and oracle, the faceted garden, oracle, um, the thoth, and the terra incognita. I've been working with the terra incognita like just a little bit, just playing around with it to see how it looks or how it feels with the, um, with the, what do you call it? The thoth tarot. <laughs> Apparently I don't know the name of the deck that we're working with all month. Anyway, so these are the four cards that I got. I hope they're quite visible. If you can see that, they have a very, um, they have a visual theme going on. There's a, there, there's something there. Can you see that? Super cool. So, <laughs> so clearly there was, um, there was a visual theme. So that was super helpful for Sigil. And I'll just read you what it said um, for Sigil. It says, um, the magic behind making sigils is in the action itself, the making of a mark, a pictorial and symbolic representation of the desired outcome of what you intend. When you draw these spiritual signatures, whether on paper, clay, or in the air, or in ash or sand, you are inscribing power from your earthly body to that of an energetic, energetic body, constructing a reality, drawing out of the fifth dimension what you would like in this third dimension. You are co-creating with the archetype of the magician within to actualize your dreams and aspirations. So I really like, I mean, it's so cool how they just came together so beautifully and just seeing that shape kind of showing up everywhere was, was really, really, really cool. And of course this had an impact on the sigil that I made and the writing that was, um, in the magazine for me. Um, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed 
yeah, even just coming up with the title of the little article or feature in the magazine of making a holy mark sigil work as soul medicine was really, really beautiful for me. So yeah, I made my sigil. Let me just look at it while I tell you about it. Mm, yeah. And it just really incorporated that, that, that shape, that stance, as well as these feelings of, um, I really leaned into the herbal allies or even going back to the sounds that I heard here with the holiness, which is why I called it a holy mark. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was just really incredible. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'll just quickly tell you about the Queen of Wands experience because it was a little bit different. So with the Queen of Wands, I felt like what came forward first for her was what her method of expression was. Like first I looked at her, where's she at? Come out, there you are. You know, I, when I saw her, this, I shuffled for her. And what came first forward, I was like, I don't know, it's giving politician. I don't know what it was. It, she just felt like a politician to me. I also thought talk show host maybe or a news anchor, maybe even a journalist, something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I I was getting this feeling of like, we can turn this city around or like, there's nothing we can't do. There's nothing we can't fix. Like there's hope for us. Like I just felt like uh, the biggest thing was no matter what the past has brought, we walk boldly into the future. Anything is possible. And I felt like the audience for her would be like underprivileged, underserved people in the community. I feel like she would really speak to the people in the margins, the people with who had a past that society ended up casting them aside because of it. Um, specifically, I was thinking about people who struggle with addiction, who um, maybe have been incarcerated or have, you know, some, some type of, you know, uh, trouble with the law, you know, stuff like that. Crap. Um, people who, uh, struggle with homelessness, houselessness, things like that. I felt like she would be a beacon of hope. People who felt like they needed the hope to get out of whatever situation that they were in, or they felt like they were not getting their needs met by the society at large or that they were cast aside. I feel like she would have that history and that experience to speak into that. And I thought for, for music, I thought she would like, um, I don't know, maybe it's because it's just top of mind as of late, but Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. I feel like she would be into like hip hop rap and like reggae, um, like older reggae stuff. The I was thinking Three Little Birds by Bob Marley uh, and the Wailers, as well as like every, well, first of all, every little thing is going to be all right. I feel like she would just, that's the energy that she would give, you know, as well as get up, stand up. She'd be like, get up, stand up. She'd be like, stand up for your rights. She would be telling the people, get up, stand up. And also everything's going to be all right. And she, she would really have that like sort of like calming yet energizing, empowering presence. And yeah, like why would someone show up and listen to her? I feel like they would see themselves in her. Like I said, I feel like she would have experiences and she would be so openly talking about them and where, um, where she's been and how she got to where she is today. I feel like she's charismatic she's honest she's relatable and you can feel her compassion her passion and her compassion i think she would uh, project her voice really well i think i think she has an extremely powerful like i don't think it's like a deep voice i don't think it's a high voice i think it's just it's i don't know it's like all of the frequencies all at once and i think she would have like been like new on the scene or like someone that you wouldn't have expected to be a politician as well i think that's what would make her super interesting so i'm not exactly sure what uh thing that i would create like i thought about making a um like a little campaign sign for her i think that's something that i might do um or also like a speech that she might do but obviously that's more intensive so yeah, there's so many different ways that I could go with it. If I went with like the talk show host thing, I don't know, like what kind of segment that she would do or if she was a journalist, what's, what stories would she be interested in? Um, yeah, I thought she, or even as a news anchor, I think that's the second one. I think if she wasn't a politician, she would be a news anchor. I think, sorry for the shift, my camera's being weird, so I'm gonna wrap it up, but I think if she wasn't a politician, she would be a news anchor. I think that would be uh, more up her alley. I think journalist would be a little bit more queen of swords energy to me. Um, but there's so many different ways to be a journalist. So I think she just would want to be really helping people and serving her community, um, because she wants to be what she would have needed. And I think she's very powerful at accomplishing that and being heard and being seen. I think, yeah, she's incredible. I love her, which is really interesting. Um, 
from me because I always really struggled with not inside the thoughts specifically but I always really struggled with the um the wand suit I tend to think of like the king and queen of wands like I really struggled with them like I love the knight of wands in most decks um I think of the tarot the divine masculine when I think of the wands I think of him as very like I think of him as the picture of valor to me personally uh in a lot of ways you know obviously you know everybody's has their not so great sides but yeah to me he's just like the picture of like just the upstanding masculine to me the valor um but with the with the queen and the king i always tend to think of them as a little bit more shadowy i don't know what it is but like every other um like all the other kings and queens and other decks like i can see all of their sides like it depends on the reading but with them i'm just like conniving i'm thinking of the king of wands as like a bad businessman <laughs> Like, I'm thinking of them in not very positive light. But with this one, I mean, always, you know, I never saw her saw her in a negative way. I think she just, you know, the images are, um, they're too clearly cool and good to me to be instinctively going in that direction of um, the shadowy sides of the Queen of Wands. But this one, I was just surprised to have made such a impactful and deep connection and idea of her. So I'm excited to bring those, like, experiences forward just hearing her say um no matter what the past has brought we walk boldly into the future anything is possible thank you dear queen of swords and thank you to the star and thank you for watching thank you for being here um i'm so grateful like i said if you did um the activities this week let me know in the comments down below just thumbs up uh just a little thumbs up to let me know that you took part or if you plan to take part i would love to know um, always, of course, uh, if you're interested, join the Discord and uh, join the conversation there. So I'm excited to hear the uh, experiences for this week. We'll be starting new threads and talking in the new channel for week two. So I'm super excited to um, fill that space with conversation and experiences and just connect over uh, our explorations and the fun time that we're having with the thoughts because we really are having fun there. And I'm just loving hearing your feedback. It means so much to me. And I'm loving just that uh, for you all who are watching and taking part at home. I'm, I'm really, really grateful. So um, I love you dearly. I will see you in the next one. And uh, have a good rest of your day or evening. And I'll see you soon. Bye.